Hey guys, so um, I'm filming this video from a hotel room, uh, so this will be being posted, I'm not sure when I'm going to post it, but anyway, this will be me from the past, talking about, here to talk about Look Homeward Angel by Thomas Wolfe. Now I finished this like a week, a w more than a week ago, um, and uh, but I was in the Czech Republic for a whole week, and so I didn't get a chance to review it. So this discussion may be a bit subpar because my thoughts and feelings aren't kind of fresh. But uh, but I'm going to talk about this book because it did give me a lot of thoughts. Um, um, so <clears throat> I'm going to start, I think, with thing. Oh, so this novel was published in 1929. Um, it is heavily autobiographical. Uh, it's about a young, a boy growing up in a town, a small town in um, rural North Carolina. And uh, and what's funny is um, right from the start, I sort of felt a kinship with this boy because the town he lives in, it's a fictional town, but it's called Altamont, North Carolina. And the thing is, is I grew up in Altamont, New York. So... That was just funny. Um, but uh, he he grows up with a father who is sort of seemed kind of idealistic, but um, had all these seemed to have all these expectations about how he was gonna find so much meaning in his life, and then that didn't work out. And I think that sort of led him down a path of alcoholism. So his father is kind of an alcoholic, but also sort of this weird idealist. Um, whereas his mom is kind of a she is a a real estate tycoon who buys all these properties and rents them out and wants to make lots of money and basically just wants to get out of South Carolina basically she just wants to get enough money to leave um which she never accomplishes but um so anyway this is about Eugene Gant that's his name growing up in this family he has eight siblings um and it's literally just him from it starts from before he was born and ends when he's 19 and it's it, it doesn't have any kind of a real plot. It just follows him as he grows up and uh, follows his family to it. Every now and then takes a bit of a detour to analyze one of his siblings. And um, you get a lot of insights into his parents as well, both of his parents individually. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of the basic out. That's what it's about. And um, like I said, there's not really any plot. Things just sort of happen in this kid's life. And... Then it just kind of ends. Um, but, um, so I'm going to start, I had mixed feelings about this novel, so I'm going to, I'm going to start with the positive, I guess. Uh, so I, I think that this novel really did, this is sort of, when I read the back of the, the, you know, blurb on the back of this book, I was like, okay, so this is another one of those coming of age novels by a white dude that, everybody loves and um and uh it definitely it didn't exactly it met that expectation but um i did think it really it did a really good job of conveying how growing up feels i think sort of the i guess the psychological experience of it i mean it sort of the early stages of the boys of eugene's life seem to be in this weird dreamlike state um Wolf kind of uses a, seems to use a lot of just talking about his sensory experiences and it, it gives it like I said a dreamlike state which I think if we don't experience our early childhoods in a dreamlike state we definitely remember them I feel like I feel like I remember my childhood in sort of a dreamlike state so that was interesting to see and just you know the awkwardness the getting annoyed at adults the getting annoyed at other people your age getting annoyed at your family all that is there, um, but, yeah, so, I thought it did a good job of that, uh, it definitely, there was, so, this is full of people who are all kind of, um, none, no one in this novel seems to have being human figured out, like, Eugene's mom has a lot of, ma manages to make plenty of money, but, she also has a really stilted relationship with all their all of her children. His father is an alcoholic. Um, his oldest brother is a delinquent. Uh, 
his one of his sisters is kind of not a nice person, really, kind of annoying. Um, but just it's full of people who don't have life figured out and there is this one, I think, very profound moment where this isn't a spoiler, but um Eugene is looking at a machine that folds newspapers and uh, he notices how perfectly it folds every newspaper and spews it out looking exactly the same. And um, I think I, I, I think Wolf kind of in the narration connects that to being human and kind of like, you know, how those newspapers get folded so easily and so perfectly. But being human is not that easy. You don't just become a person you know, you're not just born, raised, and then suddenly you're fulfilled. It's like, it's much more complicated being human. Um, and I think we get a look into that. I mean, Eugene is obviously figured out, figuring out how to be a person. He's figuring out what he wants in life. You know, he's, he's pulled between what his parents want for him and what he wants for himself and what his teachers want for him. For him. And, and obviously, as I said, his parents and his siblings. Um, so, yeah, you could like get it as kind of a long exploration of just how no person really has life figured out, I guess. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Um, I think at the, near the end, there is, there's also sort of, sort of like these existential explorations of kind of finding meaning, like especially Eugene's older, one of Eugene's older brothers, uh, his name was Ben, I believe, who kind of was just, looking for some kind of meaning in his life, specifically looking for meaning in his life. And he thinks he might find it if he goes to fight in World War One. So this takes place in the early 19, 1900s. Um, that would have been good information for me to give. I'm sorry. Uh, and he thinks going off to World War One will help him do that. And he can't go because he's not physically... The doctors won't let him. Um, he's kind of physically... I guess physically frail. Um, but there's that too. And I don't know. I don't... I don't know. I don't know how much how much that's played out throughout the novel that strongly, I guess, in terms of Eugene's story, but um it is there as something to ponder. I I mean, it might be more apparent on a rereading, but um but so there was that and at the very end in terms of that theme at the very end of the novel, I do think something very very profound and important, I think, is said about sort of existing in a godless and possibly meaningless world, whether you believe in God or not, um, where, you know, maybe the world is meaningless, maybe we won't ever find meaning, but we can at least kind of exist with some dignity. I mean, we're important to us, we're, each person is important to themselves, obviously, but the people in their lives are important to them. They are important to the people in their lives. So that seems, in the end, to afford some kind of dignity to human existence, since, like, if you feel like the world, the universe is meaningless and life is meaningless, then sort of you might think, well, I'm unimportant. What, why does my life matter? Or why, sh you know, why should I care? And um, I think that sort of relationships with other people are a way of holding on to some of that dignity and thinking, okay, maybe I'm not cosmically important, but I'm important sort of to the other people in my life. And, but that's complicated by the fact that Eugene kind of has a really dysfunctional relationship with almost everyone in his family. Uh, and that's another theme that comes up, kind of um, how you can complain all you want about how, how annoying your siblings are, how how your parents order you around or how so-and-so is a is a delinquent or whatever but like it, there does come a point where people aren't going to change and you might just need to accept them with those flaws so and i don't know if eugene fully accepts his family in that regard but it is a point that wolf seems to make and you know but so yeah I guess those are some themes, uh, but now that that I think moves me easily into my sort of quibbles with this novel, and it's that a lot of these themes are given to, fed to us by Thomas Wolfe in his narration, 
and it always kind of bugs me when authors are like, so the meaning of this is blah, and um, so I I don't know, I don't know whether that's that big a criticism, but it, it maybe irks me slightly, and so the narration too, there's a lot of narration in here. A lot of this book is just narration. I mean, there are big pages that are just blocks of paragraphs, and I a lot of it is very kind of poetic, almost like almost you might want to cut like prose poetry sort of stuff, um, of just basically nothing happening, just Wolf kind of expostulating on something, and I, I didn't know whether that added that much to the story. Um, it seemed at times maybe like it was a bit self-indulgent almost to Wolf. Wolf just wanted to be this Shakespeare sort of guy writing about, you know, writing poetically, just not with as much meaning as Shakespeare. Um, and so, and also there were parts where I got really confused with what was going on. There's parts of it are told in this strange stream of consciousness, stream of consci consciousness style way, where like it skips from scene to scene within short paragraphs, and that was super hard to follow. And I didn't, and I couldn't figure out whether that was because of sloppy writing or because it was like a, just a, a weird, a weird experimental style. And in fact, in the back of the novel, there's a discussion question. My edition has. Um, sort of discussion questions for a book club in the back. And one of them is, uh, you know, some literary critics regard this as a masterpiece of experimental fiction. Others say that it's just sloppily written and undisciplined. And in the end, I kind of felt like it was just sort of undisciplined. Um, one of the, there are two introductions in my edition. One is from the editor of the novel, and he talks about how he had to edit out so much of the novel. Like, this novel was going to be longer. Um, and the editor had to cu cut out a lot because there was just a lot more of what sounds like more of this, you know, prose, this sort of luxuriant prose. Um, and I just don't know always whether I thought it added to the novel. And also, he he makes a habit of constantly making these references to poets and poems. I know he references the wasteland, but T. S. Eliot's the wasteland a few times. Which, which actually, that those allusions to the wasteland were the illusions that I was most okay with, because they weren't like, I don't know, they, the other illusions could often descend into these like, oh, woe is me, like, kind of additions into the prose that weren't, that seemed more melodramatic than anything. Um, but the but the reference the allusions to T. S. Eliot were a bit more subtly woven in, not entirely. I mean, um, you know, if you've read the first basically if you've read the first five lines of the Wasteland, you would get the allusions. So I guess, but, um, so, yeah. But, yeah. So I have mixed feelings about this novel. Definitely. Uh, I'm trying to think if I I'm forgetting something. Um. Yeah, I mean, there's no real plot, like I said, so it can get difficult to get through in that regard. I, I'm usually okay with that. I'm usually okay with no plot, because I read classics and literary fiction, most of which doesn't have a strong plot. But in this case, I don't know, it, it got to me. And um, I don't know, I guess maybe I found the book a bit disorganized. Um, like that one scene I mentioned earlier, well, that one scene where it's told in sort of disconnected short paragraphs of different scenes, like, that only happens once. You know what I mean? If that were like, if that had been something that occurred throughout the novel, then it would, then it would tell me, okay, so this is some kind of technique he's using to tell the story. But since it only occurred that once, I was like, why is this here? Why is there this one spot like this? And yeah, so, anyway, obviously I have mixed feelings. I, I do think it does a good job, again, of conveying that feeling of growing up, um, of just at, at each stage of life, you know, from, and, okay, one more thing I forgot to touch on, um, how when you're young, so much of your identity is sort of, um, sort of, 
tied up in your relationships with the people in your family. You know, the people in your family are such a big part of who you are when you're young. And getting older is sort of a process of breaking away from them and really becoming your own person rather than defining yourself through the relationships to these other people, which is interesting because they also talked about the theme of needing to accept those other people and your relationship with them. Um, so, I mean, there's, I guess, a matter of finding a happy median. I mean, but, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think I'm leaning towards, I said mixed, but leaning towards the positive, positive I think. Um, I do think it's worth reading at least once. Uh, I'll have to see how this novel sort of grows on me if I continue to think about it, if it returns to me sort of in my thoughts, um, whether I'm ever compelled to reread it sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Look Homeward Angel by Thomas Wolfe, a mixed review, I don't know. Um, I, I think I've, I've said everything I'm going to say. I hope this wasn't too... I feel like this review w might have been almost as uh, disorganized and undisciplined as the novel was. Um, but anyway, I hope it wasn't too, too much. Um, but so, thank you guys. Goodbye.